indeed not the first time that we hear about Uzbeks participating in terrorist attacks um, in different parts of the world, in Sweden, in Turkey, in Russia, uh, now in the United States. I think at this point it's difficult to say whether there's something unique about this case, something uniquely Uzbek, uniquely Central Asian, when we have an increasing body of evidence and a set of samples of different kinds of terrorist attacks committed by different ethnicities in different countries using similar tactics that are spread by jihadist groups and networks, including ISIS, um, instructions that are sent out on social media channels or through ISIS publications that reach all sorts of different ethnicities. Of course, it has potentially very large implications for the Uzbek community in the United States. Um, I think Uzbek communities um, and Central Asian communities more broadly in the United States will be under more scrutiny from um, investigative services, from the police. Um, there also may be direct consequences um, in terms of visas, um, as President Trump unfortunately has already raised, which I think would be a very disproportionate um, and poorly thought out reaction to this incident. Um, what we can say um, is that we hopefully will learn what actually happened and how this person, Saipov, um, came to the point where he would commit this attack. The fact that he's in custody, um, the fact that U.S. investigative services will have access to him, will be able to study his movements, his contacts, um, who he communicated with, what he was reading, uh, means that we should learn a lot, actually, about his radicalization um, and about uh, how he came to make this decision and to commit this act. And that in itself would be a very important process for people trying to understand the problem of radicalization more broadly and for understanding the problem of radicalization um, for Central Asians and for Uzbeks. So one hope that I have is that this case will be handled in the United States in a criminal court of law instead of uh, overseas in Guantanamo um, in the way that President Trump has indicated he might want to. I think that would be a terrible mistake. Um, I think it would deprive us of a lot of information about the case and uh, what happened. And I think it would also be um, a serious violation of our own constitutional structures and of the human rights obligations that our system um, imposes upon us, even in cases like this. Um, even in cases like this that are terrible and that are tragic for everyone who's been harmed, but where we have a system that's capable of handling it within normal rule of law. Thank you.